So, while we wait for Audley Harrison's ninth fight and Danny Williams' European Championship contest in Germany, enter the next big headline grabber in boxing. Who is he? He is Hay. Most kids want to be firemen or uh, to each other wanted to be a fighter. That's all I've ever wanted to do. This tremendously talented youngster is on the threshold of something really terrific. And with dynamite in either hand. If there's any cruiserweights out there, they want to have a pop at me, you know. Find Eugene Maloney, who can sort that out. <laughs> he is something very special, and who knows, maybe he can go all the way. Well, just about an hour ago at the York Hall in Bethnal Green, it was the moment of truth for David Hay. Uh, just before he went into the ring, he spoke to Jim Neely. Well, David, a final look round. Uh, yeah. Any old nerves at the moment? No, not at the moment. Once I get the gloves on, I start walking to the ring and the music starts. That's when, um, that's when I'll start getting fired up. Sunday afternoon at Bethnal Green, not perhaps your own ideal uh, place to start your boxing career, perhaps? It's not that bad. Um, Sunday afternoon, everyone's got it off free, so everyone will be able to get down there and support me, so it should be fine. Have you got many people coming? Yeah, I've got an army load of people coming down, so it should be rammed. The atmosphere should be good. And, I've boxed here before and you know, it's always a great atmosphere in Bethnal Green, your call, so it should be like that this, morning, this afternoon. Big decision not to stay on and go for the Athens Olympics and I suppose in a, a couple of hours time we'll know whether that decision was the right one. Yeah, it should, should be fun. Um, obviously I've got a good opponent in Tony Booth, very experienced at over 100 fights. So um, the different rules, the referee's not going to be pulling me up constantly, so no vest, no head guard and it's just a completely different sport and I'm just looking forward to, looking forward to a new challenge. Having had such a good amateur uh, actual career, huge expectations mm -hmm. from everybody, what about your own expectations? I'm just going to take it one fight at a time. I've seen people look too far into the future. I'm just going to take one fight as it comes and just take it. I'm aiming for the British champion. So um, once I'm there, then I'll look to Commonwealth, then European, then World. But at the moment, it's being the best in Britain I'm looking for. Hey, have a good one. Thanks a lot. Cheers. Well, the waiting is over. Uh, David Hay looks nice and relaxed. Back in a boxing ring. For the first time in some five months since he departed the Commonwealth Games in Manchester under uh, somewhat controversial circumstances and the big decision to forsake the headgear and the amateur vest for the much tougher world of professional boxing. Well, a man who made it to the very top as ever beside me. Richie, what goes through your mind when it's your pro debut? Well, sir, I think he looks so relaxed, but um, what will be going through his mind is He'll be more nervous of the actual situation, I would have thought, than, than, the, than the opponents, and that's no disrespect to Tony Booth, but um, he'll want to impress. He's got a lot of people supporting him here, so he'll just want to impress them today. But, yeah, that's where the nerves might come in, but he just looks extremely relaxed. There doesn't look like a nerve in his body, and uh, I'm impressed just watching him walk, walk through the, the door, Jim. Ladies and gentlemen, four three-minute rounds, cruise weights. Well, one wonders how the nerves are holding up for David Hay. He certainly looks nice and relaxed, and my goodness, doesn't he look in good shape. 13-9, and one suspects that he's going to operate as a cruiserweight as his professional career unfolds, but he's in against a man who has been in against just about everybody. This is the 122nd professional contest for the man from Hull, Tony Booth, and he has actually had more wins than any other current British boxer than that with the exception of Johnny Nelson. He's actually had 41 professional victories, Tony Booth. Johnny Nelson's had 42, and for the record, Lennox Lewis has had 40. And, you know, Richie Woodall, this was a, a pretty tough call to take on a guy like Tony Booth. Yeah, I was quite surprised, actually, when um, Booth came in um, as, as, the, you know, as David A's opponent. Um, it just goes to show that David A and his management team really aren't mucking around here. They've picked a pretty um, very experienced guy uh, who's been in with everyone. But straight away, David A getting to work and he's settling the nerves. That, that right hand over the top, great shot that. But yeah, I was a little bit surprised. This, this kid, Tony Booth, if he fancies the job, he, he can cause problems for David A. Well, the kid, as Richie calls him, is uh, 32 years old. He's 10 years older than David Hay. He's been in with uh, four 
current or former world champions. David Hay, well, that's uh, not the most auspicious start to his professional career, being told off by Richie Davis for what was very definitely a low blow. And remember, it's four three-minute runs, and David Hay has been used to four two-minute runs. What a great right hand by David Hay, and he's caught Tony Booth. This is an impressive piece of uh, punching by the novice. Tony Booth in action just some uh, 10 days ago when he went in against a promising heavyweight, the Israeli-based Londoner Roman Greenberg. Greenberg, I should say, lost to him in points, but what an explosive start by Hay. He looks nice and relaxed, but that hand speed is very impressive indeed. Yeah, excellent stuff for me, and what, what he's doing here, that shot there that he delivered, that the right hand, well, first of all, he's thrown a left hook around the guard of Tony Booth, which is literally distracting Tony Booth, and then the right hand follows, and that's the shot that, that, that he's getting home with. Very impressive from David A early on, and uh, as I said, that left hand just distracting Booth, and then he's coming across with the right hand. Good work from Hay early. Round the corner, Tony Booth uh, complaining a little bit that it was uh, something of the old kidney punch, went right round underneath his left elbow. But this is impressive stuff from David Hay, who will well remember that one of the last times he was in this hall, the York Hall here in Bethnal Green, he was stopped by Commodore's Jim Twight in the ABA semi-finals after he'd stopped Courtney Fry, his great uh, amateur rival. But this is good work by Hay, he does look impressive, and Richie, he's in superb condition. Yeah, he looks in great condition, and he looks very extremely relaxed. Pretty impressed with him early here, because normally in the first round of a contest can be a little bit nervous, but here he's getting to work, and straight away he's, he's getting those big punches on. He's, he's varying his work from body to head. It's the right hand that's doing all the damage, but uppercuts, hooks, but yeah, this is good stuff from Hay. What a good opening three minutes, and David Hay acknowledges the contribution made by Tony Booth. But trainer Adam Booth will be delighted with uh, the first three minutes of paid boxing by this fella. Just 22 years old, David Hay, nice and confident, a little smile, and uh, he'll get plenty of confidence in the corner. Hope that he doesn't need Mick Williamson in there, who's one of the best cuts men in the business. But that was a very impressive opening three minutes from David Hay, and this is professional debut. And uh, he launched a couple of very good two-fisted attacks, and that was a cracking right hand, and straight away he didn't let his man off the hook, and uh, Tony Booth really did well to survive, Richie. Yeah, he did, and as I said, it was that left hook around the guard. There it is, and there's the right hand to follow. The left hook literally was a distraction of a punch, and it's the right hand that he got home with. Good work from Hay in that opening round. Straight up out of his stool, he learned to uh, take every single precious second as his uh, career continues. Brought together by Richie Davis once again. Uh, Tony Booth is a former undefeated Central Area Cruiserweight Champion and a, an undefeated British Masters Light Heavyweight Champion. And he has been in against well, some of the best men from super middleweight up to a heavyweight in the business. As a couple of uh, surprise victories, one against uh, former two-time world super middleweight challenger Omar Sheikha, who he defeated. But he's finding it tough against David Hay, who's looking, well, not like a man who's having his uh, professional debut, but like a man who's been in the paid ranks for some time. Nice and relaxed, David Hay. Hands held a little bit on the low side, Richie. That might just worry his corner. Yeah, maybe so, but uh, at the same time, Jimmy, this is why he's so accurate. And Look at that for a, that was a straight left, a straight left jab, lovely shot. Very, very fast for the cruiserweight, David Hayes, extremely quick. And he's got the power as well, he's got the physique, and uh, he really is a, a class act. Well, he's shaking out that shoulder, I don't think there's anything wrong with it. I think that's just his particular style, and Tony Booth under pressure. There's the Hay uppercut that so very nearly won him a world amateur gold medal in Belfast some 18 months ago when he put down the uh, Cuban Olanier Solace, and that's good work by Tony Booth, who is very dangerous. Blood now coming from the nose of this uh, man from Hull, who's based here in London. There's a body shot again by Hay. Yeah, it's good to see Booth actually coming back at Hay. Hay's been delivering some very hard shots on the target, but Tony Booth showing what a thorough professional he is coming back and having a go himself, which is good to see. And this type of guy, I mean, they're, they're worth their weight in gold, they really are, to the, to the professional game. And Tony Booth, at the drop of an hat, he'll come and box anyone. Oh, what a good right hand by Hay. Caught Booth again. Booth's eyes glazed over momentarily as Hay made contact. Hay really going for the finish, doing a little bit of holding. 
So he's picked up a, a professional trick or two at the early stages of his paid career. He actually looked like he was actually going down there. It was a lovely straight right from Hay again. Perfect shot in the corner, and it looked like Booth was going to actually touch down, but he didn't. Got up, and uh, he's boxing on. But again, Hay, very relaxed, very quick, sharp, and accurate with the punches as well. Just stalking his man. There's that straight left again. Booth holding on. Well, Hay looks super confident, the uh, torn bicep that caused him to pull out of the Commonwealth Games after a victory over the Pakistani entrant, Shukat Ali. Seems to have more than healed up. What a great pity he didn't stay, because we all reckon that uh, he would have won that Commonwealth Games gold at heavyweight. But here he is boxing at uh, the more comfortable weight of cruiserweight for him. Looks in great shape. And uh, he's hardly even breaking sweat. I mean, this fitness really, I think, Richie speaks for itself. Yeah, he looks in, in excellent condition, he really does, and uh, he's not really out of breath. So, um, yeah, he's looking good, good Nick. Great action from that round from Hay, and he hasn't let his man off the hook, and he is boxing like a man who's been doing this for a living for quite some time. And I think Richie Davis may well be calling this off. Richie Davis is calling it off. Now, we're looking at uh, a replay here, and we've come back, and I think Tony Booth, dear old Tony Booth, has had enough. He got caught very heavily. This is his 14th contest this year, and I think he's acknowledging that David Hay was hitting too hard for him. His nose was very badly bloodied. It might well have been broken. But David Hay, not perhaps the ending that he wanted, but certainly the result he wanted. And uh, Tony Booth, who took this fight at very short notice, and remember he boxed just 10 days ago, and came in when uh, the original Russian opponent for David Hay pulled out, has come in like the true pro he is. This is 122nd professional contest, and he's in against a young man who, let's face it, is going to go places. Disappointing way it ended, Richie, but no doubting the performance. No, and that's what that's all that matters to him. He's got that first win under his belt. And uh, as you said, Tony Booth, he'll come and box anyone, and all credit to him. But today he was, he was outclassed, and this, this, this kid is... Um, David Hay, he's an exception, and uh, he should go. I'm, I'm fancying this kid to go all the way, Jim. Pretty impressive start from where I was sitting, David. How did you feel about it yourself? No, I just felt relaxed, and I was just looking forward to it. The rounds seemed to be a lot longer than they used to be, so that was good. I got a lot more time to show my shots and show my reptile punches. I was a shame. I was a shame he had pulled out. So I was looking at a big third round there. I'm sure I'd have knocked him spark out, but obviously he pulled out, understandably. I'm looking at fighting as often as possible, as often as you've got the shows, I'll fight on them. I um, keep myself in brilliant condition all year round. So any time, no matter, I don't know how short the notice is, I'll be ready to fight. There's many cruiserweights out there. There's a lot of unbeaten cruiserweights out there who've turned down fights with me already. Because he's the only person in the whole of Britain who would step up to the challenge. I've had one fight. If there's any chance of you guys beating me, it'll be now. So before I get 10, 15 fights down the road, it's been possible to beat me, have a crack at me now because I'm ready to go. In that first round, you caught him straight away with a pretty good right hand. How did that feel? It was okay. It was just I just wanted to be patient and spiteful, and just did my thing. I, was, I, was, I wanted to go a few more rounds there. It's a shame, but um, obviously he couldn't take it. So I'm just I was just really happy to be in there. I felt really comfortable. Um, you could you could do a lot more. I can express myself a lot more as a professional rather than having a referee constantly pulling me up for infringements and whatnot. But I really really enjoyed it. The occasion, all the family and friends are here. It was a really good time. Did you notice that much of a difference uh, moving up to the paid ranks? Um, at the end of the day, a fight's a fight, whether it's in a boxing ring or a street or a professional ring, amateur ring, it's, a fight's a fight, it's just a combat. I just love being one-on-one -on -one with someone and trying to prove who's the best guy. Love it. <laughs> yeah, you've been boxing for the last couple of years at heavyweight mm -hmm. as an amateur. Yeah. There's no cruiserweight really in the amateur, yeah. so, so do you feel this is your natural weight yeah, as definitely. a pro? Yeah, Cruiserweight, I've got, I can make the weight comfortably. I was only one pound over the the weight limit now and obviously because I knew um, Tony Booth so I've always maintained that if you're going to fight at cruiserweight you should make the cruiserweight limit every time so obviously I found out my, the Russian who pulled out against me so he thank good um, for Tony Booth put, um, stepping up to fight me I realised he was over 14 stone so I had a big dinner and big breakfast so, so I waited about a pound over the cruiserweight limit but I'm ready to go any time so as I said come and, come and fight me come and get me you have a nice Christmas after this one and we look forward to seeing you again when? Hopefully January. I'm looking at getting out in as early as January as possible. I was ready to go all the time. I'll fight every day if I have to. I love fighting and um, I'll be fighting as soon as possible. David, very well done. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Bye-bye. But avoid him in the street because he's looking for a fight. Uh, Richie's come hot foot from East London. That looked pretty good. Yeah, very impressive. 
Uh, I've been looking forward to see how he'd be, go as a professional, obviously. I was a little bit surprised. I thought he would hang on to the, the Olympics in Athens, but it wasn't to be, because I thought he'd have been favourite for, for a gold out there. Uh, but, you know, he's decided to turn professional, but he's a hot prospect, no doubt about it. And a lot of people watching that will say, is he a heavyweight, embryonically? Um, I think he's at the right division. Uh, for, for a good two or three years, he'll be a cruiserweight. You've got to remember, Evander Holyfield eventually um, matured into a heavyweight, and that's, that's probably the path that he will take. For a good three or four years, though, he'll be a cruiserweight, and then maybe step up to the heavyweight. Think about it, John, he's got, he's got time, he's got mm. plenty of time. Unlike some others we could name. Well, you said it, not me. <laughs> but listen, a lot of people watching David Hay perhaps for the first time will, will, there will say, he keeps that left hand very low. Mm. I, is he not laying himself open to all signs of attacks there? Um, well, no, not really. But he, he does that because he's very fast, you see, and, and what he's actually doing there, he's got a low left hand, but as long as he keeps his chin down and chin behind that uh, shoulder there, he's actually surprising his opponents because he's got very fast hands and he's punching from the hip. And um, it can be a lethal weapon because you can't see the punch coming. So, and as, as well, he's varying the attack. He's throwing the jab and then he's throwing the hook. He's bringing the hook around the, around the guard. So he's, he's very impressive, very, very skillful. And very personable as well, which when you're making your way in a very competitive sporting environment, it's important. Very important. I think he's very confident. I don't think he's arrogant. And there's a big difference there. He's confident, not arrogant. And I think, there'll be, I think this kid will be, will be uh, a national success. I think people are going to get behind David A because he's a very likeable bloke. When we set up that fight, you know, as one always does on these occasions, you know, is this guy a potential world champion? Is he? I think so, definitely. As I said, he's very young. And um, if he keeps performing like that, I think the problem they'll have is they're going to have to you know, hold him back. Literally, I, I would give him a good couple of years of maybe 10, 15 fights before, before stepping him up into uh, any real uh, title fights. But I think two or three years, three years' time, then this guy could be, will, could be a world champion. And one of the major world titles, WBC, IBF, WBA, even WBO. I mean, Johnny Nelson now, he's a cruiserweight, but he's coming to the end of the road. This, this guy could fill his shoes. Okay, that's uh, good stuff. Very positive news for you. Unlike this.